Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Come along and visit with the Clampett family as they learn the simple pleasures of the hills of Beverly. And that includes the products of your sponsor of the week, the cereals of Kellogg's, Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Corniest flakes, anybody make Kellogg's. <laughs> Jessie had a wife to mourn all her life, the cheer and he was brave. Was a dirty little coward that shot Mr. Howard, and they laid Jesse James in his grave. Was a sad Hi. day. Just throwing me off the word about Granny. What's she doing? Nothing. Just sitting in the kitchen, rocking and staring at the walls. She won't talk to nobody, nor say hi to her. I noticed Granny kind of drooping this morning. I reckon she misses Pearl. But them two was always scrapping. I reckon that's what she misses. <laughs> you know, Granny's a lot like that band of yours, Ellie. She loves to scrap. That's a truth. Used to pleasure her considerable to throw Aunt Pearl out of her kitchen. <laughs> yeah, Granny don't want no one cooking in there except her. Jethro, I think you just come up with an idea. I did. <laughs> Ellie will go out there and act like she's going to fix up a mess of it'll. That'll get Granny's hackles up. You take care out for me, Jethro. Now, Ellie Mae, I know it's again your nature, and I know how much you love your Granny, but for her own sake, I want you to try to be real spiteful. Try to get her riled up. Do it, Pop. Hey, Uncle Jed, can I go too? I, after all, it was my idea. Wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> Jethro. And take that bandy along with you. Ain't nothing riles Granny more than chickens in the kitchen. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna cook up a mess of bells. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna get out every pot and pan in this here kitchen, and I'm gonna whop up the doggone his meal Anybody ever taste it? <laughs> Hi, Ellie. What you fixing on doing? I'm gonna cook up some fiddles. Granny don't allow nobody to cook fiddles in her kitchen. I don't care what Granny don't allow. I'm gonna cook up some fiddles anyhow. <laughs> I'll help you. Here now, uh, what are you youngins up to? Well, we's gonna cook us some fiddles. Why, uh, you know Granny don't allow that in her kitchen. We don't care what Granny don't allow. We's gonna cook us some vittles anyhow. <laughs> Jethro, is that a chicken you're holding? Yes, sir. Well, you better get shit of it right away. <laughs> no, I mean outside. Ain't nothing riles Granny more than chickens in her kitchen. <laughs> This is worse than I thought. Don't nothing rile her up. We gotta try harder. Ellie Mae, uh, what you figuring on cooking? Grits. Grits? Why, your granny just cooked a mess of grits last night. I know, Paul, but them was the worst mess of grits anybody ever cooked. Well, heck, I ate four great big heat and book. <laughs> Ellie Mae, clamp it. What a spiteful riling thing to say about your granny's cooking. <laughs> Child is right, kid. I can't do nothing no more. I ain't worth the powder to blow me up with. Granny, I didn't mean it. Paul made me say it. It was the best grits ever. They sure was, Granny. Like I was gonna tell you. I ate four great big bowls. 
But Uncle Jed, he wouldn't let me tell you. And he made me throw that chicken on you, too. I don't blame Jed for wanting to get rid of me. I'm just a useless old woman. I ain't good for nothing or nobody. My time has come. Now, Jenny, hold on there. No, no, Jed. Just do me one favor. Send me back home. I don't want to die in this foreign country. Now, hush that kind of talk. Pa, you ain't gonna let Granny... Don't try to shield me from him, young'uns. Just make it quick and merciful, Jed. Polax me. <laughs> well, I sure made a mess of that. Come on, maybe we can think of something if we go outside and put our two chicken brains together. <laughs> oh, come on, Uncle Jed. <laughs> Go and see Mr. Drysdale. Ask Miss Jane to come to supper, too. Mr. Drysdale, look who's here. <laughs> I don't want to be no bother. Well, it's always a pleasure to see you, Mr. Clamford. Sit down, sit down. Thank you. Well, now, what can I do for you? Well, I got a little problem. Your problems are my problems. What's troubling my favorite depositor? Well, uh, who? <laughs> <laughs> you, Mr. Clamford. You. Who? Oh. Well, you see, it's Granny. That poor little old woman is feeling lower than a fat frog in a dry well. Well, now, we must do something to cheer her up. Indeed, we must. You see, back home, we just have a bunch of neighbors in and uh, have us a do. Ain't nothing pleasures Granny more than doing for folks. Doing? Yeah, you know, whomping up a big feed, tapping a keg of her cider, seeing everybody has plenty to eat and drink and has a good time. Well, can't Granny do that here? Well, you folks is about the only ones we know. We'll be happy to come. Just say when. I reckon the sooner the better. How about tonight? Well, I'll be right neighborly. Uh, Miss Drysdale in town? Yes, she is, and she'll be delighted to come. Delighted. I would rather face the firing squad. <laughs> Honey bun, please. I cannot picture myself with my fine old Boston background sitting down to dine with those prehistoric hillbillies. Well, I don't <laughs> Milburn, I have told you repeatedly, I will not mingle socially with the Clampers. And I have told you repeatedly that their money is the pillar of this bank. Money isn't everything. Only if you have plenty, which you will not unless you go to Granny's dinner because I will cut off your allowance. You wouldn't. Try me. You brute. Associating with Jed Clampett has made you the same kind of a man that he is. Oh, no, Margaret. If I were the kind of man Jed Clampett is, I wouldn't waste time talking. Oh, no. I would put you across my knee and paddle your fine old Boston background. <laughs> Chief, Mrs. Drysdale, this is indeed a red-letter day. Guess who has just landed on the roof? Well, it's a little early for Santa Claus. <laughs> no, no, indeed. It's our distinguished chairman of the board, Mr. Martin Van Ransenhall. What? Well, I, I thought he was on the world cruise. No, he's anchored his yacht off Balboa and helicoptered in to see you. Mr. Van Ranserhoff. Marty Milburn, call me Marty. You know Mrs. Drysdale. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, congratulations. Congratulations? For what? Well, I think you should be the person who I'm elevating your husband to the board of directors. Board sure, of directors? Nice, oh. I mean. Yes, well, he deserves it. Any man that can land the Clambert account is my kind of banker. <laughs> And I want the two of you to celebrate with me having dinner on my yacht. Well, thank you. We'd be delighted. Oh, I have a new French chef that's a genius. Every meal is mm, an adventure. Sounds marvelous. But darling, have you forgotten that we're dining with the Clampets this evening? Oh, well, don't worry about that. I'll call it off. Oh, no. No, we won't. There's one man I want to meet, J.D. Clampett. Business genius. Financial wizard. Shrewd, calculating, incisive. <laughs> Mr. Clampett? <laughs> <laughs> Who told you Mr. Clampett was that kind of a man? <laughs> you did. <laughs> I did? Yes, right after you landed the account. <laughs> oh, then! <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, he's still the same kind of man, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> of course, certainly. He's, uh, he's, uh, crude. <laughs> uh, what was that? Shrewd. Shrewd. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. That's just the word I was looking for. But come on, dear. I'm sure you want to rush out and buy yourself a new wardrobe to celebrate your husband's promotion. I'm doubling your allowance. Children, <laughs> now you see what trouble mingling with the lower classes can bring. What do you intend to do? Just what any decent, sensible man would do who has lied his way into trouble. I'm going to lie my way out. <laughs> oh, Mr. Van Ranshoff. 
Marty, Marty. Oh, yes, <laughs> Marty. Well, the Clampets won't be able to have dinner with us on your yacht. Well, why not? Well, it was foolish of me to forget this, but they're rather susceptible to seasickness. Uh, sort of a family characteristic. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. They won't get seasick on my yacht. <laughs> Compared to mine, the Vanderbilts have a rowboat. <laughs> the whole dining saloon is as solid as this building. Just being near the ocean upsets them. Yeah, what a shame. I was gonna fly the entire Lido Dupree show down from Las Vegas. Our company, a little entertainment during dinner. <laughs> What's a meal without some atmosphere, huh? <laughs> Just one of those things. Now, I'll tell you what you do, Jane. Uh, Charter me a jet, so you will fly everywhere to Hawaii, have a little luau, and wear moonus or mama. The hula, you do the hula? It'll be a ball. I'm sorry, they're also subject to air sickness. You just can't have an ordinary dinner for a sophisticated man of the world like J.D. Clampett. A sophisticated man of the world? That's what Milburn says. Bon vivant, international financier. Those were your exact words? They were. Well, they were, yeah. I'll tell you what, I haven't done this in years. Uh, Jane, uh, get a, 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 a charter a, a train, see? And uh, I'll get the galley crew and the chef. <laughs> we'll have an orchestra in the club car. Dinner on the train and dessert in San Francisco. Should be a million less. Last time I did this was between uh, Paris and San Moritz. I had everybody dressed as Swiss yodel. <laughs> St. Bernard dogs running with kegs of brandy under the neck. Wow, wow, wow. I tell you, the Duke and Duchess, it really was embarrassing. <laughs> What's the matter? They get train sick, too. Well, how do these people travel? In space capsules? <laughs> well, just don't stand there. Come up with an idea. I'm racking my brain, believe me. Granny? Granny, look a here. I learned Earl a new trick. He's a dead rooster. <laughs> Dog. Just put us both in a pine box and send us home for burying. <laughs> he ain't really dead. He's just playing. Look at this. <laughs> See? He's alive. It's more than I can say for me. <laughs> Tell me, you best stop playing with that chicken. You got lots to do. What, Paul? Oh, uh, cooking for company, that's what. Uh, we're having a big doing. Well, who's all coming? Well, Miss Hathaway, uh, Mr. Drysdale, Miss Drysdale, I don't know who all. Well, what'll I cook? Well, the fanciest spread ever. Jethro's out right now uh, getting some fresh vittles. I reckon you can start heating the water for the owl soup, and I'll go down to the cellar and fetch up some uh, salted possum. <laughs> Hold on, everybody. We's having a do, I'm gonna do with the doing. <laughs> Get out of here. Nothing me like chickens in my kitchen. And the rest of you scat, too. Ellie Mae, you set the table in the fancy eating room. Jen, you go cut me some fresh greens. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have a doing for the folks next door. I'll bake them up a possum and plenty of more. We'll have a keg of cider and a little Mountain Dew, and we'll all ham ourselves up. Hullabaloo. <laughs> Look, there's a place out here called the Coliseum, isn't there? Yes, it's a stadium. Oh, good, good. We'll hire it for the night. Tell you what, we'll have a Roman Bacchanal, see? <laughs> All the guests will wear togas. They have laurel wreaths in their hands. Uh, uh, Marty, yes. I, I don't think you can get the Coliseum on such short well, notice. Such... We'll get Grauman's Chinese. That's a thing. Rent the theater, you understand? Have all the guests dressed in kimonos, and we'll have dinner out in the forecourt. Oh, and by the way, Jan, get me some fresh cement. I'll bet you Jed Clampett never put his footprints in wet cement while eating fried shrimp. Well, I'll tell you the truth. Oh, I know what you're going to say. That's the trouble with fellas like Clampett and me. We've been everywhere. We, we've done everything. There just are no, no new thrills. Yes, yeah, that's, that's probably why the Clampets are such a secluded family. They never go out. Say, by the way, you're going there for dinner tonight, aren't you? Well, yes. But... Uh, uh, Jane, uh, call them and ask if I could impose on their hospitality. I just got to meet the Clampets. No, 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 don't call them. Well, why not? Well... They don't like to talk on the telephone. Now, I'll go up there in person and speak to them on your behalf. Oh, good boy, good boy. <laughs> Look, uh, just in case, I better get a date for tonight. Uh, get me Liz Taylor on the telephone. I believe she's in Europe. Uh, Judge of Gabor. Paul Bridget and married. Susan Hayward married. Jane Mansfield married. Jane Hathaway. <laughs> Single. <laughs> Who is she? Yours truly. <laughs> yeah, Shirley MacLaine married. <laughs> Shirley Jones. 
Mr. Van Ranserhoff, I think I should tell you that I already have an invitation to the Clampets for dinner tonight. We are very good friends, very close. Really? Yes, indeed. Oh, uh, would you mind turning around? Oh. <laughs> Debbie Reynolds is married. Yes, Mr. Van Ranserhoff. I think you should also know that the Clampets do not, as they say, cotton to strangers. Miss Hathaway, uh, let me say that uh, you have a date for this evening. <laughs> Jolly good. But, a word of caution. The fact that I have appeared eager might lead you to believe that I am a girl with whom you could take liberties. Nothing could be further from the truth. I permit no familiarity on the first date. Bless you, my girl. <laughs> I can't tell you how sorry I am, Mr. Clampett, but you see, Mr. Van Ranselhoff is my boss. Well, uh, bring him along. Great, he's got plenty of possum and grits and owl soup. Well, I'd, I'd love to bring him, but he has dinner planned on his yacht, and I have to do what he wants. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Well, so am I. Poor Granny, he's gonna be like a mule kick to her. <laughs> well, tell her we'll come tomorrow night or tomorrow morning for breakfast if she likes, but. Tonight, I have to be with Mr. Van Ranselhoff. Well, I understand. Thank you, Mr. Clampett. Thank you very much. Better not bring these in to Granny just yet. When she hears the news, she's liable to commence flinging them. <laughs> Every time she had just heard the news. Now, simmer down, Granny. You can't catch Mr. Drysdale. He's done gone. <laughs> what do I want to catch him for? coming back here tonight with Miss Jane and Mr. Rancy Hoff. Is Mr. Rancy Hoff coming here? Sure he is. Miss Jane just called to see if he got the invite. I said, shucks, he don't need no invite. Just bring him along. <laughs> hey, doggy. If Mr. Rancy Hoff is coming, then he's all coming because he's the boss. Oh, we're going to have a do with the bird post next door. Jane and Mr. Rancy Hoff and that makes four. We'll have to take a cider and a little Mountain Dew and we'll all have a What do you mean, Rance Hoff's going to the Clampets? I'll be exposed, I'll be ruined. Chief, Chief, Veritas Vincit Omnia. If that's the name of a poison, get me some. See, the truth conquers all. Tell Mr. Van Ranselhoff the truth, admit that you deceived him. Do you know what happened to the last man who admitted that to Ranselhoff? He is now working at the bank at Moose Jaw, Alaska. He goes to work in a dog sled. I have an idea. I, I am. Um, Mr. Van Ranselhoff's date tonight. I'll tell him the truth. I'll pick a romantic moment and seal it with a kiss. Are you kidding? He has a bank north of Moose Jaw. Wait till you see the divine gown I purchased. It was designed especially for an evening on a yacht. We'll take it back and try to get something as good for a day on a dog sled. <laughs> Hey, what a place, huh? A veritable palace. <laughs> I hope this isn't one of those dull, stuffy, formal parties, you know. Last week I went to one in Buckingham Palace with the liveried servants and the protocol. <laughs> Not a lap all in. Well, I doubt very much if it will be formal. On the contrary, though. Oh, 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 don't tell me. I love surprises. Oh. Elsa Maxwell gave me a surprise party last month at the Waldorf Astoria. Converted the main ballroom into Sahara Desert. Sand dunes and camels, real camels. Everybody came as chic. She came as a belly dancer, and I was Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> oh, what a laugh. What are you doing? I'm packing for Moose Jaw, Alaska. <laughs> Ransomhoff just arrived at the Clampets. Surely you're exaggerating the situation. Margaret, one look at those hillbillies and I'm an Eskimo. <laughs> Lady Clampett, may I present Mr. Martin von Ransomhoff? How do you do? Hey, they just call me Jed, and this here's Granny. Pleasure to know. How do you do? <laughs> ah, this is fabulous. No, this is Ellie. <laughs> My daughter, Ellie Mae. Hi there. See, I got a rooster that plays dead. 
You want to see him? Right, May, let's wait till later to show off your critters. This fine young fella here is my nephew, Jethro. Well, howdy, Mr. Rancy Hoff. <laughs> He's my cousin Pearl's boy. We're right proud of Jethro. He's going to graduate from the fifth grade this year. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> young man. Well, thank you. Hey, let's all go sit in the parlor while Granny pulls a bung on a keg of cider. <laughs> Jane, Jane, this is marvelous, simply marvelous, and what a surprise. Who would think that a stuffy millionaire like Clampett would come up with a hillbilly party? <laughs> the man is a genius, and those accents, they must have been practicing for weeks. Oh, longer than that. <laughs> okay, yes, when do they start the hoedown or the square dance or whatever they're going to do? <laughs> oh, excuse me, Mr. Ranchy Hall. Uh, Marty, Marty. Well, come on, Marty, Marty. Uh, once uh, Granny pulls the bung on that uh, cider, it evaporates awful fast. Look, we'd like to get in the, in the spirit of the party. Have you got any more clothes like the one that you're wearing? Sure. Uh, Ellie Mae, Jethro. Take these folks upstairs and get us some party clothes. Sure. Uh, yeah. Hathaway. Hathaway. <laughs> you look like something out of Tobacco Road. Well, you're not exactly Adolf Manjou yourself. <laughs> you know, I can't get over an important millionaire like Clampett going to all this trouble to surprise me with a hillbilly party. He's a wonderful man. He's the greatest. He's a millionaire's millionaire. <laughs> I'll always be grateful to Drysdale. For... By the way, why aren't the Drysdales here? Well, that's rather a long story, Mr. Van Ranshoff. Call me Marty Marty the way Clampett does. That kills me. <laughs> well... Marty, Marty, Mr. Drysdale thinks you're going to transfer him to your bank in Moose Jaw, Alaska. Moose Jaw, Alaska? <laughs> Milton, what are you doing? I'm trying to figure out if I can convert these into snowshoes. <laughs> I've had enough of this ridiculous nonsense. Are we going to dinner or not? No, that depends. Mr. Van Ronsehoff spoke so highly of his French chef. I'm simply dying for a Chateaubriand. How would you feel about a nice big dish of flaming blubber? <laughs> I hear square dance music. What does that mean? It probably means that Ranselhoff has left. He's on his way over here, and we're on our way to Moose Jaw. <laughs> no longer for the dryers deal. Her owl soup and chicken fried hawk is getting cold. This way to the fancy eating room. <laughs> owl soup and chicken fried hawk, what a sense of humor. Drysdale's missing the party of the year. A do see do <laughs> Dinner in the billiard room, this is priceless. How, uh... Before we all sit down, there's a couple things I better explain to you, Marty Marty. <laughs> now, these sticks with the notches in them is the uh, pot passers. <laughs> and these pointy ones here is the meat stabber. It's just dandy for stabbing stuffed crew. <laughs> Wish Elsa Maxwell and Pearl Mesta could be here. Partial to stuff pro, is they? <laughs> well, come on, sit down, everybody. Uh, first, we'll have Grace, and uh, after that, Ellie Mae will pass out the deviled buzzard eggs. He is just fine with baked possum. <laughs> Is 
that fabulous? I tell you, I've been to parties all over the world, but this is the cleverest, the most original, and what food? Uh, imagine calling roast pheasant or just stuffed crow with gopher grits. Oh. <laughs> I, I noticed that you didn't eat much. Oh, the excitement of the evening. Yes, I must say, I don't blame you. I can hardly wait to get back from that around the world cruise, see what kind of party they're going to plan for me next. Oh, Marty, Marty. Granny says you seem so fond of her deviled buzzard eggs, she wanted you to have these to take home with you. Well, thank her for me. You bet I will. Good night. Good night. Is that beautiful? Still in character. <laughs> Miss T. Miss Jennifer Way, how did you know who this is? At this time of the night, who else would be calling me? Well? I've just prepared a bowl of Kellogg's cornflakes. <laughs> Miss Hathaway, tell me about it. Well, you know about Kellogg's cornflakes, crisp golden flakes with real corn taste. Miss Hathaway, what happened at the dinner? Oh, he loved it. Thought it was a gag. You're in chief, board of directors. Keep talking, Miss Hathaway. <laughs> Victory came at precisely 9.47 when Mr. Van Rath's about to declare that you are the corniest flakes anybody makes Kellogg's. The Beverly Hillbillies has been presented by Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Corniest flakes anybody makes Kellogg's. From Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. You all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation. <laughs>